Across Europe, grandparents are playing a major role in looking after their grandchildren, often to enable parents, especially mothers, to work. We want to explore the implications of this role in providing childcare for other aspects of grandparents' lives. For example, increasingly, grandparents are being expected to stay longer in the labour market. So how will they manage to combine work with childcare? To help answer these questions, we will be looking at the findings of Grandparenting in Europe, a pan-European research study. We will also be talking to three families living in the UK to illustrate and exemplify the findings from across Europe. Our studies were of people aged 50 and over, and it's a large-scale study. It was 3,000 in England and Wales, and over 30,000 in the rest of Europe. We were investigating patterns of grandparenting, childcare, and policies. The main finding is the differences in care given by grandparents to grandchildren. It varies from 90% in Romania to about 40% in Germany, and we come about in the middle, 63%. The second main finding is again the differences between intensive grandparent care um, across Europe with only 2% in the Scandinavian countries giving intensive child care up to very high levels in southern Europe. Let's hear from grandmothers themselves about the child care they're providing and what support they need to juggle that with other aspects of their lives. My name's Astrid French. I'm 67 years old. I retired about five years ago. My daughter had one child, Arlo, and when she went back to work part-time, we then used to look after Arlo um, about one day a week. At the moment, she's on maternity leave because she's just had her second child, and Luca, and she will go back again to work and then we will start from October, we will start looking after Luca and Arlo. Although it's lovely and we really love our grandson and he's brought great joy to us and it's really enriched our lives without any question of a doubt, it is still something that's a commitment that you have to do at the moment every Monday and Thursday we're looking after Arlo. So there's lots of things that we can't do. Now we're lucky in that we're retired, that we are comfortable enough, that we don't have to worry financially. Uh, but there are many parents out there, or grandparents out there, that can't afford to retire. It's not possible for my daughter to go to work for three days. She doesn't get paid enough money to pay a child mind 50, 60 pound uh, a day. It's, it's, it's just not worth her going to work. So it's extremely difficult for her to manage uh, if, if, if we weren't looking after Arlo. I think uh, uh, women today are much more aware of the kind of the quality of care they want their children to have. The state should provide decent, affordable childcare for parents. It wants women to work, it wants people to work, then you have to provide as a, as a society decent, good, childcare and that is just not available. At the moment most of the informal childcare is provided by grandmothers like Astrid who aren't working but this picture is changing as we will see from our next grandmother. My name is Josune Arthayuth. I live in Oswestry which is in Shropshire. I'm a grandmother and 54 years old. I've been a British Telecom engineer for the 27 years now. Last year, my daughter started working full time for the council. That meant that Kayden, her son, would have had to go to nursery five days a week, 10 hours. We decided that it was too long for the child to spend 10 hours in a nursery. So I asked whether I could go on part time. I got my time off. Until then, I had to take annual leave from my holidays to look after Caden. Nowadays, I think more and more jobs are asking employees to work longer hours. In a way, she's lucky that she's got me to look after Caden because otherwise, I don't know how she will manage to keep her job either. I think employers should be flexible 
I think the state uh, expects parents and grandparents to take caring responsibility for children, grandchildren, and most time it falls on a woman. So they expect women to work until they, they are 65 or more. In my case, it'll be until I'm 66. But at the same time, childcare, for example, is a very, very expensive. So they are in providing childcare that is affordable and is quality. So they rely on their grandparents to look after the, the children. The other text not, so they can help us get him out. For Chasun, being able to work flexibly means both she and her daughter can combine work with childcare. For other grandparents, being able to work flexibly means they can support the parents to stay longer in educational training, giving them the chance to enter a better career. My name is Joyce Jacker, I'm 52 and I live in Deptford, London. My profession is community development. I have three children, twins who are 22 and a son who's 14 next week. I've got three, three grandchildren and another one on the way. I will do things like collect them from school. I collect from nursery because next week my daughter is going back to college. So a few days a week I'll have to go to the nursery and collect and maybe a few days a week they might stay over and then I might take them before I go to work. I don't think they would cope without me. Do you manage your right grandparents? No, you can't manage your right grandparents. Recently, Monique went to college and she has two children and the childcare, they would only pay for one child. So we had to take it in time. You know, picking up, bringing home. We just had to share that share care so she could complete her course. I love being a grandmother and I like spending time with them. My mum helped me. My grandmother helped me. I love them and because that's what I need to do. That's what I should do. If older people, especially grandmothers, remain longer in the workplace, there is a serious risk of an informal care gap arising unless state support is increased. Working mums in London face some real challenges and the cost of childcare is really, really high. And so often women face this really stark choice of going back to work and pursuing their careers um, actually for no money. And we found that to be one of the main causes of child poverty in Camden. And it has a real long-term impacts as well. The longer a woman is out of work, the worse her promotion prospects and future salary prospects become. Well, grandparent care is an essential part that helps families keep afloat, actually. It's an essential part of the mix of childcare. But in London, um, it's only about 18%, whereas in the rest of the country, it's 32%. And there are some particular challenges for families in London. Again, this co is contributed to by the high costs of housing. Families find it very difficult to stay in the immediate locale. Now, families are forced further and further and further apart. And the calculations around how much grandparents contribute to the economy and offering free childcare are really stark. And actually, I think government organisations and local authorities should try to do more to promote and recognise that and make it easier for grandparents to be able to provide good quality childcare. It is a growing trend where a, a number of women, particularly in their 50s and 60s, have caring responsibilities at both ends, actually. So they might be looking after um, a, a partner or their own parent who's very elderly and providing grandparent care for their own children's children. And actually that puts a real pressure on those women and it's a growing phenomena and we really need to be thinking about how we support that. I can see a real crunch point coming where grandparents are no longer able to provide the support that they have traditionally provided. And actually, as work patterns and the population ages, the pressure on some bits of the community to provide care at both ends will be huge. Compared to the UK, in European countries where there is less state support for families and childcare, fewer mothers tend to work. And where they do work, they rely heavily on grandparents to provide childcare. In Southern Europe, there's very, very little support um, in the way of childcare 
or um, money given to parents, maternity leave and so on. And so they are completely, almost completely dependent on grandparents if they work. Whereas the pattern in um, Northern Europe, um, the Scandinavian countries, is that it is assumed that women, mothers, will work full time and therefore the state provides childcare, so there's less need for grandparents. And we're about in the middle, Germany and uh, the UK, where um, there is an assumption that you will work, women will work, but it's more likely to be part-time. And so I think that explains quite a lot of the differences, the different welfare regimes in parts of Europe. The other policy implication is that women, particularly in uh, grandparents, are going to be expected to finance their old age increasingly. They are expected to be in paid work, but also to earn enough for themselves in retirement and for their social care and their health care. The answer to a lot of these problems is flexible work. If you can work part-time or you can work flexibly or you can work from home and you have employers who are supportive of this, this is going to help enormously. At the moment, about a quarter of working grandparents say they've taken time off work to look after their grandchildren. We'd like to see grandparents entitled to request flexible working in the same way that parents can request flexible working. And we'd also like to see grandparents entitled to take leave from work to provide childcare in the same way that parents can take parental leave. Grandparents seem to have been invisible in policy terms. The second is that policies have concentrated on women and mothers working very little on the position of grandparents, either working or not working. The third one is there are very different welfare systems across the world and the problem is with constraints and cuts there's going to be much more importance given to grandparenting role rather than public services. We need the state to acknowledge the value of what these women are doing. Although there are similarities between different European countries, there are also differences. Every European country will need to come up with its own set of solutions to enable grandparents to continue to support their families and also to work.